there was a time in you know, mid 2000s, something like that, where I was pinning a lot, booking a lot, and I was, you know, I was getting a little cocky. I was feeling myself, and um, I, there was this audition for this um, indie movie, and I was like, an indie? How are they gonna call me for an indie? I just did like all these series, right? So, you know, um, my buddy's like, hey, do you need to read? Do you need to prepare? No, nah, I got this. It's like a Sean, like a P. Diddy character. I got it. I don't even know who these people are. It's not going to be that big, right? Anyways, um, so I carried that. I, I go to the audition, and I'm not going to name names, but the actors that were there were folks that we see in movies, TV shows. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. I go in the room. Now my head is spinning. Now I'm thinking I have to do, you know, uh, oh my God, what, I got to be big. I got to do something. Let's just say that my audition was so bad. It, it, it felt like I was out of it midway, thinking to myself during the role, oh, this is not going well. It's like a comedian bombing. Should I stop and start over? No, let's just keep going. Um, when I finished, I didn't even get the obligatory, thanks, thank you. Thank you for coming. I kid you not, there were three people and a camera person. Um, they just looked at me. And then I stopped, you know, and I was just looking. And it was that awkward silence. And then I was like, okay, well, thanks for having me. I kid you not, I walked out of the room and then there's a room that has its, its windows. So when you walk through the hallway, you know, you could they could still see you walking by. <laughs> and I walk out. No word, no thank you, no having, I walk past the window, I look, and they're still like, they're still looking at me. I got, and then my, I saw some people I know, they're like, hey man, how'd it go? I was like, oh yeah, no, I didn't audition for that. I just, uh, I came to drop somebody off. I'm, I lied. I got in the car, I drove off, taught me a lesson. Never, ever, ever disrespect a craft. Never disrespect an audition, if I got it, they called me for a reason, right? And be professional at all times. I went to one audition, I'll just say that. And one of the producers was an African-American actor. And I was like, oh, this is great. But when I saw what my former rep sent me to, it was like, you know, Jacquith something, whatever thug, whatever. And I'm like, I'm not like, like I studied at Rose Bruford. I got, that's not me, right? Like I'm gonna go in there and be like, hi, I'm a thug. So um, they were like, well, they wanna see you and this is not, you know, an office we wanna turn down and all, you know, they gave me that thing. And I was really upset. So I was like, okay, if they wanna see a thug, now I'm gonna give them a thug. And I went to the sloths and swap me and I got the gold, fake gold chains and the teeth and the whole nine yards. I'm telling you, I had a wife, uh, uh, what do you call it, tees? I won't say the, the tees and then my Adidas sweatsuit and the do-rag. And I go in there and I walk in the lobby. Like, you know, I had like a, you know, those fake cigarette, the prop cigarettes, but I rolled it up to make it look like a joint and I walked in there and everybody's head just turned like, you know, what? <laughs> and the, you know, when I walked in the room, it was that actor and everybody else was not black. And everybody else just started laughing. And the one gentleman just looked at me and he straight, he, did, he saw me and he went. <sighs> so I'm, I'm doing the scene, but my, my fake grill is trying to come out. And so I'm like, yeah, you know, cook, hold up. Cause you know, and then everybody's just dying laughing. And um, I had no intentions by the way of, I, I did not want that rope. This is, and and then he, he asked me, he said, well, you know, can you do it without that in your mouth? I said, sure, but it's part of my character. And he goes, well, you know, the character is what you bring to the role. And I said, yeah, but I bring this. And then he, and then he goes, well, well, do it without it. I said, fine. And I did it again. And he, you know, he just looked at me and, and I said, you know, I said, the reason I dressed like that, I didn't know, thanks for the laughs, was because I don't think you guys understand how it feels to be someone like me who's been doing this since he was a kid. And the only things I can go out for are thug number one or, you know, suspect number two or, you know, 
something like that. When I tell you that by the time I got to the car, I was pinned. And I was like, I don't want that role. Sometimes keep your mouth shut, especially if, if the lead actor is having a bad day, which he was. He was yelling at everybody, you know, and we rehearsed. It was fine. Uh, we go to shoot. He forgets. He's supposed to say my character's name. Hey, and I go, yeah, I'm, you know, and and I look at him and I see his eyes glossed over. So I gave him a beat and then I say, I'm, you know, and I say my name, Bill Henderson. And, and he blows up like, you know. You should have came in earlier and all this. And I'm like, well, I didn't forget my line, though. No. And so, <laughs> you know, so then here's what happened. He stormed off. I kid you not. He stormed off. I'm sitting there like, what's going on? Um, they told me, eh, just just go to your trailer. We'll get back to you. You know, let, let's find out what's going on. And um, and this was I had a guaranteed six and they were looking at a possible, you know, upping it if it, you know if it got picked up and about 10 15 minutes I, I got i see the my phone ringing myself and it's my agent so i'm like huh and then i get a knock and i'm like yeah one second and then i i, I you know yeah can i and, oh did you have you spoken to your agent no okay we'll we'll come back and then my agent's like yeah well they're gonna pay you out for the six but today's your last day <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Sometimes I got to save my sarcasm, my, my, you know, just do that. Hey, there's a time to speak. There's a time not to speak. I didn't know that cast and crew well enough to, to do that. But I just, you know, I had a problem with the man yelling at me like I was a six year old and you know what? And yeah, I spoke back, but then I lost an opportunity. So there you go. <laughs> I've been able to be in the arts ever since I was a child and see the different, you know, parts of it and leave. And, you know, I went to graduate school and, and, and got my master's in public policy and administration, as, you know, because I love studying. You know, I, I love government and the complexity of it. I was one of the first for the, the President Clinton's National Service Program. I went to the White House and I worked in communities of, you know, various communities setting up after school programs and things of that nature. The lens that I'm able to focus on when I'm dealing with the character is wider than, you know, most people I know. I'm not just thinking about, oh, look, these are the 16 blocks I grew up on and this is how it is and this is all I know. I, I can pick from a wide array of different character experiences. And I think like when I speak to folks, I have a different perspective. First thing I do is I don't try to prepare right away. I'm not trying to memorize. I don't do any of that right away. I need to, it's like a suit. I need to know how it fits. I need to know what it is, what fabric, right? So I need to know who this person is. What is the story? If I can get the script, I always ask my reps. And if I have time, you know, but I, you know, I'll stay up all night reading a script first. Um, Cause I want to know how this character fits into the story. What is the purpose? my purpose, the character's purpose in this story. Like, what am I doing here? Um, then I try to pick up on mannerisms. You know, what would this, you know, I, I do the whole what ifs, but you know, how does this, how does this person relate? What do they think of? Well, how do they stand? Like, do they sit like this? Do they slouch? Do they, you know, I need to know all those things before I can read. And then obviously I go into the other characters and that's something I know you're big. On, so I want to know, the other characters first, because I need to know how I relate to people. Otherwise, I can just read what's on the page and that won't get me anywhere. So once I understand, OK, that is my wife. I really am in love with her, but I have a secret. But, you know, whatever. Or that's my friend. And yeah, he's a troublemaker and he gets me in trouble. But you know what? I'll do anything for him. or whatever. So once I know that, then everything else is easy. Uh, I used to, a long time ago, try to memorize, and but I had no foundation for what I'm memorizing, so my mind just wouldn't work. And I get into our rooms, and I'm like, oh, my mind is spinning and spinning and spinning. But if I walk in and I know, look, this story in in this reading, this story, 
I need to tell her a secret. I need to let him know, you know, something. And I need help from her to get to him or whatever it is. So when I'm in there, the words just come. And then I can, I can, you know, like wearing a suit that's tailored for you, then I can do that. Sometimes, believe it or not, I like to listen in the car, depending on what the role is. If I need to calm myself or relax myself, I'll put on some Mozart on the way. Um, I usually have headphones, believe it or not, I'm usually not listening to anything. When I get in a room, I have the headphones because I don't want people talking to me. So I'm always like, oh, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. Just because I don't want to break out of my focus. And then when I get in there, I, you know, I'm really quickly trying to set everything up. Okay, you're this, you're that, you're the background, you're, you know, and I'm, give me a moment, please. And then I'm like, okay, so that's, that's my little process. I don't replay auditions in my head. I leave the room. Sometimes I'm superstitious. I'll do a quick knock on the door like, thanks, appreciate that. I walk out, take the sides. Thank you, in the trash. You know, unless it's like a script, then I'll, I'll file it somewhere. And then um, the only thing I'll do is, I will tell you that the, the one thing I do is what felt good, this felt good. Why did it feel good? because I did X, Y, Z. Okay. And I'll make that mental note. Oh, when I, when I had that one in 10 scene and I was thinking about X that helped me focus. And that, that's, that's what I'll. I had a former agent that was mad at me, um, you know, and said, you know, we're dropping you. Cause I just don't feel that, you know, you are, uh, the caliber of actor that we need on our roster. And everybody has a Nan Dutton story and she was great, great lady. Um, I, I auditioned for her and she made an offer on the spot. She was the only one I ever knew, that's why I mentioned her name, that could make an offer on a TV show from her without producers or network on the spot. And my agent, um, and, and it, was a, it was a good role on, on, a, on a, you know, on a network show and my agent was trying to play hardball with her and you know that didn't work nan was old school and i was like look i i'm not working i know you need to make money but your 10 percent commission you're fighting for 500 dollars. that's 50 bucks i just give you the 50 bucks. and you know what i mean like it's not going to be that big of a difference and i was like i think we should do this i don't want to turn this down and so um that's she was like you know what fine we're gonna drop you anyways You know, I've had like cast directors, um, uh, you know, he's, the feedback I heard was he's, he's average like everyone else. There's nothing, you know, okay, that's fine. I'll be average, whatever that means. But listen, I can't, you know, I don't know what people are going through when they say things or yeah, I can't take it personally. Find Video Village. I don't know now during a, you know, a pandemic, it, it might be hard. But if and when we get through it and you're able to stand or sit around Video B Village, park yourself right there. Um, even if it is not your turn to be on set and you're in a trailer, if somebody's doing a scene, that'd be a great time to just go look and see how things are done. A lot of times I didn't go to trailer. I didn't want to just sit in there. I get antsy and I would just watch, watch how people work, you know, especially seasoned actors, you know, see how they're working, see kind of notes they get and see how they take notes in direction and just be open to anything you know don't come thinking okay it's going to be one way they may change your lines when you get there they may take away lines i don't know but just be like you said this earlier just be willing to be open so anything any direction you're given it's like sure i could do that sure and you know it's relationships on set people want to know that they can trust you and they can work with you they, that you're not going to be a problem um there's so many things that go on in a set. The last thing folks want to worry about is an actor. So, yeah, <laughs> the last thing they want to worry about. This was Beyond Borders, Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, and, and we're playing opposite each other. And I'm supposed to be this, maybe I'm in a cartel, maybe I'm not. And we are face to face and he takes a step up 
on, on my shot over his shoulder. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to back down from you, Gary Sinise. So I take a step up and we're literally this close. And I'm saying my lines and then, you know, it ends on my line and I say it and we're just staring at each other. And there's an awkward beat. And I kid you not, I was like, I don't hear anybody calling cut, but I'm not backing down. Like this was my chance. And he, he, he does this weird move, Gary, he, he grabs his hand and he goes like this. And for a split second, I thought he was gonna punch me. I was like, ooh, this is a story I can tell for the rest of my life. Gary Sinise punched me on set and he, he puts his arms around me and he lifts me up and he started lifting me up. Now I'm a couple inches taller than him. So he's lifting me up and he's like, this is how it's done. This is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, where'd you find this guy? And, and then he, you know, he walks me in my trailer. He says, hey, I'm in a band. You were great. When I finish, when we rap, I'm doing a concert and you're invited and um, he's kept in touch. I, I think that was a moment where I felt like, wow, like, you know, if if he's moved, then yeah, I think I'm doing the right thing. It felt like, and it's weird to say, but it felt like I belonged. You know, it was like, okay, all right, man, you're you're in the big leagues now. Hey, so I'm looking for an agent or a manager or something. And I'm like, well, do you want an agent or do you want a manager? They're two different things. And then I'm like, do you have uh, a resume? Nope. Have you studied? Nope. Do you have a reel? Nope. Okay. So if, and I tell them, okay, so if you're an agent or a manager and you, you depend on me for you to get paid and live your life and pay your bills, would you sign me? My theory is, and how I've always worked is, you need to be ready for when the moment comes when someone says, you know what, we're gonna give that guy a shot. That you, you're at your best. Because you know this, Karen, you don't get many of those opportunities of those windows. And you can get one where it's so bad, you know, that they remember you, unfortunately, for the wrong things. And then when you're trying to get back in there in the future, they're like, nah, we don't trust that person. So patience, I mean, I, I tell folks patience. And if you're, if you're thinking that, you know, I'm gonna be Brad Pitt and strike it rich and do a bunch of movies, I mean, fine, but how many people aren't Brad Pitt? You know, we've got hundreds of thousands just here in LA, you know, in the guild and not a lot of them, you know, they're not in that 1%. I think I was in a bubble when I was younger in a, in a, in a Cuban uh, Afro Latino community, right? We, there wasn't, it was just people that knew each other and just our kids, just the kids. I grew up in LA, about mid city. And when we, my mom got a job in the Valley and she wanted me to go to Valley schools in elementary. I think when we moved out here after. So that was the first time I experienced it. We, there was a bus, it dropped me off and people were picketing protesting boycotting we don't want them here you know go back home they're they're animals and so i did not i i didn't know anything about that i i you know call it naivety or whatever I, and i remember there was these two two girls in class uh the blonde was adrian and michelle and you know we were just sitting on the floor and i was like hi and adrian said um oh i can't we can't we can't i can't speak to you my parents said i can't speak to you and that we don't want you here and I said to her, I was confused. I was like, well, they must have been talking about someone else because I don't know your parents. And then she looked at Michelle and Michelle looked at her and she goes, yeah, I guess not. And that was, it. and we became friends. It's been tough. I mean, I've had run-ins with police. Never, you know, I was never in any trouble, never arrested, but I had like police follow me home on the mic yelling, hey, out gang, you know, are you affiliated with this gang? Are you a schoolyard crip? Are you knowing that rival gangs were nearby? And I'm like, nope, nope. I'm just walking. My friends, Rod and Jason, lived in a valley. And on weekends, last, you know, I picked the bus back home. And I remember the last bus that I needed to get through Hollywood and then to get home, the light wouldn't change. There were no cars on the street. And I kept cutting the light and the bus was coming. So we ran across the street because I didn't want to, you know, miss the bus. And as soon as I got across the street, lights come on. Woo! And they get on the thing, don't board the bus. So then I'm like, it's the last bus. 
and they get out and they're like got the weapons and everything and i was like let me see i was in the ninth grade so uh, the bus driver took off um and they gave me a jaywalking ticket and told me you know not to be out there at that time again i had run-ins with police in orange county i've been followed and you know i've had guns drawn on me um before i've been kicked and and by a police officer pulled me and my friends over because we looked we fit a description and and um my friend dwight said something like oh when your mom finds out that we got pulled over you're gonna get it and i started laughing because i was like oh yeah i am and the guy says what are you laughing about and bow and he kicks me in the ribs <laughs> It's funny now, only because if we don't laugh about it, right? 